I don't know if you saw, I said in the management thing, emotional TLC, uh, emotional support. Uh, yeah. That's not only from us, that's from the family or their nearest and dearest. So, uh, oh yeah, there's a strong emotive thing. This is an emotive area. It's highly connected to our emotions. And, you know, we can expect, oh, okay. Do you know what I sometimes say? If I think a person is struggling with their thoughts and I say, painful thoughts can result in pain <coughs> in vulnerable areas of our body. Everyone knows that, pain in the butt, pain in the neck, headache, blah, blah, blah. Everyone knows that. And, and I say, in you, that could be here. If you're thinking bad, hurtful, resentful, uh, painful thoughts, it might come out here. It, and in you, it probably is. You've got to get hold of that. Now, if that requires a psychologist or a little bit of antidepressant for a short while, that's fine. But when we're treating this, we have to know it's a highly emotive area and emotions can play a powerful role in promoting dysfunction in this area. So we're not just treating the mechanics of it. It's fine to look at all the mechanics. It's really interesting. Fibrocartilage, repair potential, all that's great. But it's attached to a person and a personality. And if we're trying to manage it, um, if we disregard that, we're not, we're not going to get success all the time. Oh, so, mate, did that answer that? If short, I don't rely on it, but it, there may be a role for it. And I might also add, guys, I should have added in the treatment, does it work? Yes, it does work. Does it fail? Yes, it does fail. In what circumstance? Well... Compliance has a big role to play. So if the person's not with you, if they're sitting there listening to you like this, or the mother's taking most of the attention, the kid's going, uh, do you think you're going to succeed? Mm, not much. There'll be a few phone calls a week later. Oh, uh, chance isn't getting better. Uh, you haven't seemed to help him too much. And, rah, rah, rah. and you go, is he doing his stuff? Oh, and by the way, if you ever want to check whether the tongue posture is correct, get them to poke, protrude the tongue and there should be indents of the upper teeth on the lateral border of the tongue. That's because the tongue stays in the upper front portion of the mouth, <coughs> habitually. If they're not, you know their tongue's not actually controlling the jaw system the system's out of whack, use the tongue. It's, it's 3D muscle. It's really costly for the brain to run the tongue. You know, we're taught voluntary muscle has an origin and an insertion. Goes across a joint. Does the tongue? Uh-uh. What makes it work? My brain, thinking of what I'm saying, or want to say, and the tongue going, OK, I'll make those sounds. <laughs> like that. I'm not even... It's amazing. But very costly, it occupies a lot of software in the brain, sensory and motor. That's why damage to the lingual nerve is such a disaster after oral surgery. Can't feel the tongue. So tongue is there to modulate this system and we should employ it. It does raise the question of dystonias and so forth. It kind of is another story. So there are some people that actually can't do that. For the vast majority of us we can. If we want to and if we can breathe through our nose. <coughs>